we like to welcome Sister Jenti from our heart, love, respect from the family of Asia, BK family, with beautiful flowers. Welcome, Sister Jenti. And your favorite peaches. <laughs> <laughs> All for you, Sister Jenti. <laughs> you are so popular. I don't need to give any introduction, okay, Sister Jenti. <laughs> sister Jenti is our very much beloved sister from London. And Sister Jenti takes care of Baba's children in the Europe, all over the world. And now Sister Jenti has also new role to take care of more responsibility of Yagya as an additional chief of Brahma Kumaris. So let's welcome Sister Jenti with one hand wave. So Sister Jenti, now over you to give us beautiful class on Didi, alert, accurate, all-rounder, whatever you have taken from Didi, please share with us. Om yes. Shanti, welcome. Thank you. Om Shanti Rajni Ben, Om Shanti sisters, lovely to be with you all. And yes, it's your good evening and my good afternoon. And so happy to be with you, especially today. Today is the actual day for Didi. And so it's a lovely time to be together because Didi was one who loved the family. Um, always, always bringing everybody, everybody closer to Bab Dada and let me share Didi's story from what I know from the very beginning. Didi's family background was, of course, very, very high class. But um, when she surrendered, she inspired her mother to surrender. Queen Mother, Baba gave her that name. And then also her sister and three other members of the same family. So can you imagine six people surrendered all together at that time? And Didi Manmoini's name was Gopi in Lokic Life. And Gopi had a lot of love for not just Krishna, but she used to think in her days of bhakti, um, I don't know whether I'm going to be ever able to see Krishna but at least I want to be able to see the gopes and gopis who enjoyed dancing with Krishna. And of course, then when she came to satsang, then she saw not Brahma Baba, but she saw this light on the forehead. And she knew that this is the Krishna that she had been worshipping in her days of bhakti. And after that, her surrender was complete and absolute. The very first person to surrender was Didi. And so the first gopi and the first one who became so close to Baba that she was absolutely Baba's right hand and Baba's friend. Mama's relationship with Baba was a little bit more formal. But Dini's relationship was just a friendship and love, very, very intimate. And so Didi had a very special role in Lokic life in her home. Of course, she was known as the one with the very, very clever intellect, even though she had very little education. Her education was only enough to be able to read and write so that she would be able to write letters to her husband when he was traveling abroad for work. And she was taught arithmetic so that then she would be able to keep laundry lists and do budgeting. And that's it. At that time, they didn't think that a young woman needed to have any more education than that. And so you can see that she came from a very, very orthodox traditional background but her clever intellect was such that she was actually very much in charge of the family things that were going on, the matriarch 
And then when she came to Baba, Baba also made her the manager of the Yagya, the uh, right from the early days. And so Mama, of course, the mother, but managing many different things on behalf of Baba and Mama. And then she was the one who Baba sent when it was time to go to Bharat. And for many years after partition, of course, um, Shiv Baba's instruction was just stay where you are and continue with your tapasya. But then there came a moment when Almighty Baba, they called Shiv Baba Almighty Baba, when Almighty Baba gave an instruction that it was time to move to Bharat, then at that moment, Didi was part of that Reiki party that went out together with Dada Vishwa, Dada Anand Kishore, Dada Anand Kishore and Didi and a couple of others also came. And they went to Bombay, they went to Pune, and the instructions they had from Baba were, find a place which is far from the eyes of the world, but also find a place where all my children can live together. Because in Karachi, they were scattered in five different houses. And now it was Baba's pure thought that everybody should be together under one roof. And so they came to Bombay, to Pune, and nothing was suitable. They went to Ahmedabad, and they went to meet a guru who actually had been friends with Baba. And he was the guru of many of that community, the Sindhi community. And his name was Gangeshwar Anand. And he was blind. And Baba talks about him in the Sakar Murlis that when he was four years of age, he lost his sight. But his study of the Vedas from past birth was so intense that he actually dictated and people were able to write the Vedas and the interpretation of Swami Gangeshwaranand. So a very, very good man, but also a close friend of Baba. And when they went to see him, then meeting Didi, of course, he knew Didi very well from her Lokic background and also from her Alokic background. And so he was very warm in his welcome. And he said, when he understood what their mission was, have you been to Mount Abu? They'd not heard of Abu. And they said, no. And so he gave two of his followers to accompany them, to show them the way and take them to Abu. Because he said that there you have the palaces of the kings, the summer palaces and some of them will be big enough and definitely they're far from the eyes of the world. And that's how Didi found Bridge Koti in Mount Abu and history took on a different chapter when everybody moved from Karachi and came to India. And then we ended up in Mount Abu and I'm sure everybody We'll have sweet, sweet memories of Madhuban. We haven't been able to go for a long time, but those memories are in our hearts. The beauty of the mountains, the beauty of Dilwala Temple. Just imagine, it was Didi who shared with Baba the information about Mount Abu and suggested this would be the right place. So you can see the quality of Didi's intellect and how when she gave a suggestion to Baba, Baba would agree to it because Baba understood that yes, she was in tune and she had the right awareness, the right understanding. And so coming to Abu and then of course the period of service and Delhi and Delhi, the days in which of course, in Abu also days of the Basya, but Baba would say, go eat the berries on the, on the mountains, um, no breakfast. And then of course, you know the story of the beggary part and how that changed. Well, when Didi went to Delhi, 
again, very basic, simple. Didi, Daddy Janki, Manohar Daddy. And at that point, you know what their meals were? Morning, I think they just had tea, but in the afternoon they had chapati, dry chapati with salt. That's it. So Didi's renunciation, if she had mentioned anything to her Lokic family that there was a need, they would have brought abundance. But I'm Baba's child. I'm dead from the old world. I am now here. I have died a living death and my new birth is with Baba. So whatever Baba feeds me, wherever Baba keeps me, where, whatever it is Baba wants me to do, this is what I'm going to do. And Didi's early days in Delhi, Didi had a bad leg arthritis and it was cold in winter in Delhi in those days. But every morning, Didi would leave the center where she was staying and it was Rajuri Gardens. And then she would go from here to there to there, every day a different center, catching a bus early, early in the morning at 6 a.m. to be able to arrive there. Delhi is big. And even in those days, it was very big. So somebody, some center here, some center here, some center here. And she would go on a tour of all the different centers every day, a different place. And so Didi's total, total renunciation of comfort or anything else, just her love for Baba and love to bring others closer to Baba. And Didi already was doing a lot of the correspondence for Delhi and Punjab so. And she had a little, um, a little suitcase, you know, one of those hand luggage bags, and she would keep all her papers in that very, very accurately. And for a time, Sudesh Didi was one of her secretaries in which she was um, dictating, and Sudesh Ben was making notes and sending out all those. Uh, letters to everybody with instructions, with gyan, with chit chat. So, Didi managing to look after all that zone very beautifully. And then, when Mama became Avyakt, Baba asked Didi to leave Delhi and come and stay in Abu. And you can see God's plan that it was a period of training to be able to look after the yagya. That period from 1965 through to 1968, three years of training. And then in October 68, Didi left to go on tour. And that's another story. But um, for three years, Didi was with Baba absolutely through the whole time. Um, Didi would be with Baba mornings and accompany Baba when he came to class. Then Didi would be with Baba for the office work immediately after class. And then Didi would be with Baba for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. And so appointments were through Didi. So can you imagine how much the soul was absorbing and learning, learning, learning continually? just learning from being with Baba, watching Baba, and picking up Baba's signals, Didi knew what Baba would need. Didi knew what Baba would say. Didi knew what Baba would want. So everything was being managed by Didi. And yes, Baba was there, of course, but Baba had had her put in um, Mama's room when Mama became object, so that then became Didi's room, and that then later became Dadiji's meeting room. And those of you who remember the geography of Pandavavan, we don't use that area so much anymore. But there's actually an adjoining door between Didi's room and Baba's room, and of course later on. That door was shut when we put the translite there. 
Um, so, <coughs> but really just an amazing, amazing relationship with Baba through that whole period. Truly, Didi made Baba her friend and her companion. And I first remember meeting Didi in 1966. So that would have been about a year after she came to stay in Abu. And yes, one thing more there. In the Murli on Sunday, Baba said, if Baba were to ask us, are you ready to leave your places and come and stay? And how many of you would say that, yes, I'm ready. I can leave everything in terms of service and my comfort zone. And I can come and live in Abu. And I'm sure many of you must have given it a thought. Am I ready to say to Baba, I will eat what you give me to eat. I will sit where you make me sit. I will be where you want me to be. I will do what you want me to do. Well, Didi did that at that time. She left Delhi without a second thought and came and settled in Abu to be with Baba, to manage the Yagya, to be able to take care of the family at that time. And so very much Didi's total obedience. And so a year later when I'm seeing her, um, she's with Baba all the time, very caring, very loving, very much dedicated um, to Baba, to Yagya, to service, to the family, taking care of everybody's needs on all levels, physical, spiritual, um, emotional. Um, the residents of the Yagya were about 30 people at that time. And Didi would make sure that all their needs were taken care of. Um, she knew each one personally. She knew their stories personally. And she would know what it is that could help them. And so a very lovely situation with Didi actually managing everything for Baba with Baba's instructions, but managing everything. And at that time, when I first met her, um, of course, very, very loving, but also you could see that Didi was absolutely love, but also the law. Didi herself, very accurate in terms of discipline and time, but Didi also then wanted all of us to be the same. And then, I had decided a couple of years later to surrender and I was with Baba and Baba asked me, what do you want? And I told Baba. And then a little while later, Baba called Didi. This was in the hut, in the garden. And Baba then said to Didi, I want you to take Janti on tour with you. Didi was going to be going on tour in a little while. And so Baba wanted me to accompany Didi. And Baba told Didi to settle me wherever it is um, Didi felt was appropriate. And Didi very smilingly, beautifully nodded and acknowledged. And um, that was then an amazing experience. My now we are in 1960 eight in October and Didi was going to be leaving and so I joined Didi on her tour and it was amazing. Didi already must have been in her 60s and yet Didi absolutely liked um, chatting about her early days with Baba and there was a mantra she had at that time, ek bal ek bharosa one strength, one support. And she shared her experiences of early days and how she came to Baba and then how Baba trained her in so many different things. And she said that through all this period, ek bal, ek bharosa, one strength, one support, 
this is what my life has been. And this is why I'm completely happy. And I'm so glad that Baba found me and made me belong to him. And we arrived, um, it was a night train. We went to Jaipur, we arrived in Jaipur and Didi's instantly into class, immediately. And I was amazed, a long journey and her health was not so strong, but she's immediately wanting to share with everybody. But more than class, she was simply connecting with hearts. And then afterwards, I saw how Didi did her work. She would meet the teachers, she would meet the main, she would meet the main teachers, then she would meet um, those who were connected with the center, the right hands of the center, and she would be giving um, advice and guidance and instructions. And most of all, she would be listening and she would be reflecting. And so within a day, many different things got settled. This was early days of the Jaipur Museum. And so they'd only been open for some months. And so obviously a very, very new thing. And so many ideas discussed and Didi absolutely able to give clarification. Perhaps the most amazing thing about Didi was her intellect. Very, very clean, very, very clear, able to catch Baba's inspirations, able to follow through Baba's inspirations and seeing the success of everything that Didi decided. It was clear she had a very direct link with that Baba and also Sakar Baba. And then we went on to Delhi. And again, in Delhi, Didi's timetable, quite fast. And we went to see something that had just been created. This was a place where there was going to be a training for Kumaris. And she saw the house that had been taken on rent. She saw the dormitory with 12 beds, white sheets, white everything beautiful, ready. This was October 68. But there was one thing that was wrong. And on one level, when I had gone with Didi to see this place, it wouldn't even have struck me that there was anything wrong. But we would have to leave the center, which at that time was in Kamla Nagar, and we would have to go on this overbridge because it was a very, very busy road. And so the center was just down there, come onto the main road, walk a little on the main road, go on the overbridge, come on the other side. And there was the house that was going to be the place for training for Kumaris. And they didn't say anything. They just looked and smiled and observed. But what I understood later was that she wrote a letter to Baba. Wasn't so easy to get phone calls in those days. And she wrote a letter to Baba, and that reached Baba the next morning. And in that, she said to Baba, Baba, this is a lovely house, very, very nicely set up, and everything is absolutely set up, ready to start as soon as you give the signal. But the Kumaris are going to have to go on the main road, cross the main road, and then be in that other place. And that's all she needed to tell Baba. Baba heard this and Baba sent off a letter to Delhi that Baba doesn't want this place to be the training place for Kumaris. The eyes of the world shouldn't be seeing these delicate little flowers that have come and surrendered to Baba. And that's when Baba decided that instead of having a training place anywhere else, the training place would be Madhuban. And that's when the construction of that building, which till now is called training section, that construction started as a result of this. 
Didi far-sighted, Didi able to know what Baba's awareness would be, what Baba's judgment and decision would be. And so Didi picking up on something like this, and of course, after that, um, Baba becoming Abhyat and the trainings that happen nonstop in Madhuban. I mean, it was just perfect that it was in Madhuban. Had it been anywhere else, it would have been very, very different. But to be in Madhuban and have training and have all the dadis and all the senior brothers, that was really absolutely the right place. So that was Didi. And then Didi fixed me in Agra. And Didi went on further and further and further on tour. And wherever she went, Baba asked her to go on further, go on further. Until finally, in January, she went in the Kumbh Mela. And of course, what happened was Baba flew away. And so when they were trying to reach Dadi, it was a time they were trying to reach Didi. Um, it was a time of landline phones, not your mobiles. And they couldn't, they couldn't reach Didi. Didi and Dadi uh, Nirmashanta were on tour together and they were now the Kumbha Mela. And wherever they called, they just left, they just left. And then finally, from October through to January, then Didi and Pardadi, Dadi Namushanta, arrived back in Abu on the 21st of January, literally minutes before the chariot was going to be put onto the hearse, which was a big open truck. That morning, Dadi Golzar had brought back the message that yes, the cremation would happen that day, but before the cremation, Baba's chariot should be put on an open truck and taken through the whole of the village so that nobody would complain that we didn't get a chance to see the chariot. And before that happened, literally Didi arrived exactly at that moment. And so she'd been away several months, but that was also part of God's plan because during that period, Didi had three years. Dadi Prakashmani had three months because Baba then kept Dadi Prakashmani in Abu and then shared with her the functioning of the Yagya and everything. And of course, on the 21st of January, when Abhyat um, Shiv Baba came in the body of um, Dadi Gulzar's chariot, then at that time, the flower was placed on Didi's head and another flower on Dadiji's head. And Baba said, both of you together will take care of the younger brothers and sisters. And a new chapter began. And in that new chapter, Didi, already the senior in terms of age, but also in terms of experience of Madhuban, for Dadiji, it had been just a few months, but it was Didiji who knew the Yagya inside out. But Didi and Dadi always in consultation. Didi's humility, Dadiji's humility, both of them working together, and they would say, it's one soul in two bodies. Because go to this one, and they would say, okay, this is my idea, but go check with the other. Go to this one, and they would say, this is my idea, but go check with the other one. And always their ideas matched. And so one soul, two bodies. It was a description that they gave for each other. And so the foundation of the Yagya, and of course then, they pulled in all the other dadis also to be with them so that then it was always togetherness and always unity and harmony. And just imagine people thought that after Baba became Abhyat, 
let's see how the yagya is going to manage. But it was God's plan. It was time for the shaktis to be revealed. And only when the sun and moon disappear, then the stars can shine. And so Baba was giving that opportunity for the shaktis to shine. And that was incredible, both of them functioning as one. And then, of course, both of them made the program for um, the bhattis, the retreats, according to the instructions that Shiv Baba had given. But whoever came to Madhuban, and of course, I was there when this coronation ceremony with the rose flowers happened, and then... I was there in India at the time. So then I came also for the first Kumari's training and Bhatti um, at that time. And then after that, Baba sent me abroad. But at that point, everybody would feel Baba's presence. Even today, if you go to Pandit Bhavan, of course you feel Baba's presence, um, especially Baba's room but generally also the place where Sakar Baba lived and walked and talked and taught. So that place still carries that magic. Of course, Gyan Srover has its own beauty. Um, Shantivan was created for the big family. And so everybody appreciates that. But Pandav Pavan is the place where the father of the Pandavas actually lived. And this is also where Didi lived right until the very end of her days. Um, Yansrava came later, Shantivan came much, much later, but where Baba, Mama, and Didi lived, that is Pandav Pavan. And Didi had this amazing ability to look into the soul and see the qualities of the soul and would inspire and encourage those souls to come closer to Baba. First in Sakar Baba's days, closer to Sakar Baba, but later on also coming closer to Shiv Baba and Brahma Baba, making them aware of what the yagya is and what surrender actually means. Didi's drishti was famous because when Didi would give drishti, souls would fly. It was incredible because Didi's power of concentration and her ability to focus was absolutely strong. And so, Didi Srishti carried amazing power of Baba. People had dreams of Didi. They didn't know who she was. And then when they would come to Madhuban, they would see Didi. Then they would say, this was a person I saw in my dreams, or this was a person who came to me. And I just had a vision of this person. Many stories like this. Um, Didi giving drishti and people coming to that recognition of God's power and saying that, yes, now I understand this is the truth. So many, many, many stories like that with Didi especially. Many people surrendering because Didi's surrender was so absolute, she was able to inspire others to have that surrender also because who you are, what you are, that's what you share, that's what you impart to others. So Didi, absolutely incredible on that level. Didi had a very interesting comment to make about the intellect. Didi would say, the intellect is a knife, but it's a double-edged knife. On one side, you can use just like with a double-edged knife, you can use the knife to cut a tomato, but you can also use the knife on the other side to hurt somebody. And Didi's point was, 
the buddhi, the intellect is like that. A clever intellect is good, but a clever intellect is a double-edged weapon. If you use it well, you can cut away all the bondages because your clever intellect will show you how to move forward fast. But also, the clever intellect will see fault if you allow it to. Things that other people won't notice, the clever intellect will see. And will say, you see, it shouldn't have been like this. It should have been like this. So the clever intellect can be very, very critical. But Didi's point was that if there's an intellect that is critical, then although it causes pain to others, it causes the most pain to the self because the happiness of the heart disappears. Um, there was one particular person, very clever, but she would always say to Didi, Didi, I don't know why I'm following all the principles, I'm doing everything I need to be doing. And she was a long-term Brahmin. And she said to Didi, but I don't have the happiness or the feeling of the joy of Sangam Yuga. And then Didi explained this to her. Okay, if instead of seeing fault, what about if you were to see their virtues? Because everybody does have virtues. And if you see their virtues, you'll feel happy and you'll imbibe their virtues. If you see their faults, your happiness disappears and probably you will also imbibe their faults. And so Didi giving this amazing insight. Didi's wisdom was absolutely on the dot. She would remember the morally. She was a very accurate student, um, the head of the organization, but yet absolutely an accurate student. And she would sometimes come out of her room and look um, towards Daddy G's room to see if the light was still on. And if she saw that the light was off, she would say, Jaldi, Jaldi, let's, let's go quickly. Um, the students should be in the classroom before the teacher. And in those days, we used to go up the stairs to um, the top of the meditation hall and class was happening there. So Daddy G would have left her room, but she still had a bit of a walk. And Didi G's room was closer, so she would say, come, let's go quickly before the teacher comes. And then she would sit absolutely alert with her notebook and her pen. And I used to wonder, you know, Didi's heard all these Murleys before. It was revision time for the Murleys, but also Didi would have studied them, Didi would have made notes about them, Didi would have shared the essence of those Murleys with so many others. So she knew what was the content of the Murleys, but she was still making notes. And so then when Didi saw I was curious about that, then she showed me. And the notes that she had made in her Sindhi language, um, she would read it out. And what she had done was, hear the Murli and create questions from the Murli. And this was A, to keep her intellect engaged and also learning, but also she would use those questions for two other things. Um, when Raju Bhai used to do her correspondence in Madhuban, she would say to Raju Bhai, um, I don't want any letter just to go out with business but there should be some gyan in every letter also. But of course, people are going to get them early. They're going to hear them full early. But I want you to send these questions with the answers to the people that I'm writing to. And of course, Rajupai would type that out. And then he would also, um, she would either write herself further, um, the instructions she wanted to give. But Basically, it was this combination of the instructions, but most of all, Gyan. And so Rajubhai inherited that particular skill to be able to create questions out of the Murli's 
And so today when we get the Murleys and we have the Q&A at the start, um, that's where it's come from. Because Sakar Baba, Baba would sit on the gadi, give drishti, few minutes yoga, and the ocean would begin. And then the ocean would come for that moment to a full stop. And Baba would then give the um, yad, pyar, sikila de bachyunko, Baba yad, pyar de rehe, Ruhani Bab, Ruhani Bachyunko, Namaste Kerehe. So, beginning would be the song and Om Shanti or double Om Shanti. And the ending would be Yad Pyad Namaste. And it's been later that the QA has been added, that the summary for the Harana points, and then people also wanted to have Avyat Muralis. So, um, Sunday, of course, we have that, but in particular, we also have the blessing, which is also from the object Murleys and the slogan. So all these were the systems and customs that Didi initiated. A very good student, so thinking about how everybody else could also follow and be a good student too. So finding different ways. So that was one way, the Q&A that went out to the centers that she was writing to. But the other thing that happened was that um, she also um, used to ask us to come and see her after Morley. And after the Morley, she would ask us questions. And she had, she was, um, not just serious and yogi and all of that, but she was also fun loving. And so she had great fun with us because she would ask us a question. And if we said, you know, Baba says, be so conscious, you say, that's an old woman's answer. And then if we gave, if we didn't give exactly the right words, she would say, fail, fail, fail. And she'd be laughing. And then, of course, she'd be giving us almonds, so it wasn't serious in that way, but she wanted to make us think. And one particular individual, I was with him, and one day Didi asked from that day's Murli a question and didn't get the right answer. The next day he came very prepared, real attention on the Murli, good student. And then Didi asked him a question from yesterday's morally <laughs> and again she said fail 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 so uh, um fun loving um didi the child and the master i've spoken about didi's brilliant intellect and perception but also just think about it didi at that age and she would play games with us apart from the q a with the morleys and that she would call badminton you throw the shuttle to me and I throw it back to you. And so badminton. But um, the other thing she would do from time to time is say, let's play musical chairs. And just in that courtyard in, in the front of Pandu Pavan, there would be a lineup of chairs and Didi would play with us. And she would always want to win. She would always want to win. Um, but it was fun. So Didi, imagine a woman in her 70s and she's playing musical chairs with us. So it was a time for laughter. It was a time for powerful drishti. Many different experiences with Didi at that time. Didi's humility. Didi, absolutely, absolutely humble. And so when we'd travel with Didi, I had the fortune of traveling with her in Bharat as well as abroad. And in particular, traveling abroad. Her first trip was to Singapore and Japan. So all of you uh, must be thinking Didi stepped foot in this area. And Didi would say to me, what do these souls need? And she was asking me to give her an idea of the background of many of the souls who were there in class. And so I just give her a little background of 
how long the center had been opened, who was in class and so on. And of course, whatever she shared was absolutely what was needed for those souls at that moment. And then when it would be public events, again, she would say to me, I don't know what these people need. What's happening in this country? Tell me. And so I'd give her a little summary. And again, she would um, think about it, reflect. And of course, what she shared was absolutely God's versions put across in a very, very beautiful way. So this was the, the totally humble a brilliant intellect, but yet no ego about that whatsoever. And then that final period, when in 82, she came to New York, the Caribbean and London, and accompanying her were little Mohini from Madhuban, Ramesh Pai from Bombay and Didi. And they didn't really have a Brahmani with her. It was Moini Ben who was helping her. Um, and Didi arrived after a 20 hour flight from India straight to New York. That had been the plan. And Didi had been happy that she was not having to be in transit anywhere, straight, straight to New York. And We'd just become affiliated with the UN. It was a very new thing that had happened. And um, Didi was very happy. It was a start of a new level of service. And Didi's first class, we've come from the airport back home. And the gathering, of course, once you know that Didi is coming, you're not going to say we'll see her tomorrow. You want to see her now. And we thought they would just see Didi, get some tuli and disperse. But Didi said, no, she wanted to give class. And so she began. And her theme began. It's time to go home. Ab ghar chalna hai. So she had this one thought in her mind from the moment of landing then every class was punctuated with this. And then she went to the Caribbean. And again, there, again, the same awareness. It's time to go home. And then when she came to London, again, the same awareness. And of course, in London, she was with her close friend, Daddy Janki. And so both were so happy, so happy to be in each other's company. Of course, Baba with them also, but also they had a very special bond together. And again, it was the same mantra, it's time to go home. And what had happened was that um, when they journeyed from New York to the Caribbean, Didi's bag had got lost and it was found much later when she completed her tour and reached India, but they didn't have such, such fantastic computers in those days. And so tracking and, tra um, and tracing luggage, if you'd lost something, was not so simple. But what had happened was that Moini um, Ben, not so used to managing everything, and Didi's medicines had been left in the suitcase. And so when the suitcase didn't arrive, Didi's medicines didn't arrive. And so somehow Didi managed. I don't know how she managed. Yes, of course, God and God's help, but she managed. And then when they actually came to London, Didi was not so well. Um, I didn't pick it up immediately. Um, Daddy Janki did. And then there was a little house we had in a beautiful area of London called Richmond. And we had a little house there and Didi, Dadi, Ramesh Pai, myself and a few others, we stayed there um, to be with Didi that night. Early morning, very, very powerful Amrit Vela. Didi used to be in Amrit Vela, always, always accurate, absolutely. So now... Didi 
Adam Ritvela, very powerful experience. And then I left Didi and Daddy to talk together because I knew that they wanted to share things from the heart with each other. And then Daddy calls me and I go, and Daddy says, change Didi's ticket to return back to India tonight. And I'm shocked. Our main program at the University of London was going to be happening that evening. And I must have appeared shocked and started to say something. And Daddy said, don't say anything, just understand and do it. And then I understood that it was because of Didi's health. But Daddy Janki had picked that up and had asked her, Didi, do you want us to change your ticket and go back earlier? And Didi didn't want to say no, she didn't want to say yes, but of course, Daddy could see that she was struggling. And so Didi then went back to India. And of course, everything was fine with the program and everything cooperated. When something happens with the daddies, there's always cooperation and things fall into place. And Didi came back. And the next year, 83, Om Shanti Bhavan is ready. Didi sees Om Shanti Bhavan. She's there for the inauguration. And then I leave India and I'm back in London. And what I'm told is that um, Didi had some trouble with her eyesight and headaches. And so they thought it's time to take her to Bombay. And Daddy Janki had her thyroid problem. So again, both of them went to Bombay. And people thought that Didi is going to come back very soon because it's just something with her eyes. And Daddy Janki may or may not come back. But in fact, Baba's plan was something else. Didi didn't come back, but Daddy Janki did come back and of course stayed for many, many years afterwards. But Didi's problem was not just a cataract or something with her eyes. Didi's problem was a tumor and in the brain. And for 10 days after surgery seemed to be going fine, 10 days, Didi's in a coma. And every day Daddy Janki is phoning me from Bombay and telling me, well, it seems as if Didi's in a pleasant place. Didi's not suffering at all. We're looking at her through the glass windows in the ICU, but she's not suffering. She's not in pain. She's fine. And I thought that meant that Didi would recover. But then the drama that Didi's flown away. And then when Pog is offered in Madhuban, they bring the body back to Madhuban, the ceremony happens, then there's Pog offered. In the Pog offering that Daddy Gulzar brings back, um, the message that um, all of you have been wondering why Didi was in a coma for so many days. And in fact, it's because of her love for Baba. She loved Baba so much that she always had that sorrow in her heart that for the last three months, I wasn't with Baba in his Sakar time. Baba had sent me on service and I didn't see Baba for three months. And so Baba wanted to fulfill that pure thought that she missed something. And so Baba's kept her in the subtle region for that period of 10 days so that Baba can give her that experience of his company and that feeling in her heart can be healed. Now just imagine how much love she had for Baba, but also just imagine how much love Baba had for her. And so Didi flew away and that very, very special soul must be doing very special service somewhere. Definitely part of the advance party, like Baba Center to find the right place for the family in Abu, advance party at that time, 
now also advanced party. So this is part of Didi's story. I'm sure whoever else who met Didi will share other many beautiful experiences with Didi because each one carries those memories of what they have been through with these ancestors. And so very special time with Didi. Um, Didi's love, Didi's brilliance, Didi's wisdom, absolutely in depth. With the one who is very, very close to Baba, Baba's friend, truly a friend and made everybody else Baba's friend also. So let me stop here and let's have a few minutes of yoga so that you can feel Baba and Didi's presence together. Hey. 
Shanti, Sister Jainti, thank you. I like to invite Brother Lachu to give you official our thanks words, Brother Lachu. Unmute, please. Om Shanti, Jainti Ben. Really, we are so happy to have you here with uh, such a short notice and within that short notice um, Rajini Ben also was able to inspire a lot of people to come and really we have taken a lot of benefit from this very inspiring class you know Didi's uh, lifestyle it seems is unparalleled for a person who come from such a rich family, really touching my heart. And I think uh, this kind of program, you know, looks like it may be organized more and more. And uh, because there's a lot of cooperation across the border. And then there's also what you call Zoom capacity so we are able to work together and that's something um, very satisfying to see happening in the region and also uh, i like to if it's not too late <laughs> you know to on behalf of the asian family to congratulate you on your appointment as the additional administrative um, additional uh, administrative head uh, of the Mukmarish. Uh, I think you definitely deserve it because you are one of those everywhere and really going to so many countries and, and solving uh, a lot of problems. I'm really, really very happy that you joined the Moini band and also Didi was there. So three Arshis are there. <laughs> and uh, all of you are the ones who spend lot of time overseas and in India also. So it seems that uh, uh, that this team is uh, the right team to be there now and so that you can bring the change that is needed yes. and easily according to the need of the time. So thanks so much then for coming home, Shanti. Thank you for all your kind words. Let you buy, Rajni Ben. Thank you for Sister making ben this happen. Sister Nita, <laughs> Jenti Ben, you can stay a few minutes more, Jenti Ben. Uh, <laughs> and also likes to give greetings. Sure. Om Shanti, Jenti Ben. <laughs> it's great to see you. And uh, as you were sharing experience of Didi's tour to Caribbean, I was taken back to Guyana because when she lost her luggage and she arrived in Guyana, I was yeah. there very much physically yeah. and I saw practically uh, the yeah. state of mind 
and her punctuality of Amrit Vela and Murli, because yeah. we almost arrived at the center at two o'clock, and yeah. Dadi was uh, Devi was already ready at four o'clock in Baba's room. Yeah. In spite of now having no medicine, but yeah. she was able to manage, you know, without yeah. speaking. Uh, really, I I just remember those moments with Didi and how much power I took from her because I also traveled with her to Trinidad. And uh, so after that, she went to London. Yeah. And of course, uh, lots of memories because when Didi left the body, I was in Singapore. So <laughs> by the time I had come from Caribbean to Singapore, and as soon as I heard Didi's uh, uh, leaving the body, I just did not wait. I took the next flight and I arrived in Madhuban. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be with Didi and uh, so many memories with Didi. Didi was the instrument to send me to foreign countries. I remember, you know, how Steve Narayan uh, spoke in the gathering when, with Ramesh Bhai and Didi was there how he wanted to take me to Caribbean and then how Didi uh, made the program. And I always remember uh, that how Didi gave me that encouragement to break, you know, attachment that Pushpa Dadi had with me so that I can serve on an unlimited level. So it was very nice to hear all those childhood stories Mm. And definitely ancestors' soul stories always help us to bring back that energy that they have took from Baba. So yeah. thank you so much, Jintipen. So we look forward to see you again. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, I have invited Sister Jainti to join us in Malaysia on the 25th of August to share about Prakash Mini Dadi and Jenti Ben has accepted. This is a good news in advance. We <laughs> will send you the details and everything because I think uh, Jenti Ben has a wealth of experience with Prakash Mini Dadi <laughs> particularly. So we would like to hear your encounter with sure. her. So we look forward to see you next month. But in the meantime, we would like to wish you on behalf of Asian countries, happy Rakshabandhan celebrations and Janamashtami. Thank you. Thank you, Jenti Ben. Om Shanti. Thank you, Jenti Ben. Thank you, Rashni Ben. Lovely you. to see you all. Thank you. This is gift for the <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Gift for all Baba's children in Asia. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Okay. So thank you, gentlemen. And uh, now we will have two minutes meditation. Gentlemen, you can go. Okay, so thank you. So we have meditation and blessing from Didi. करते हैं याद फिर आई है आज दीदी जी 
स्नेह के सुमन अर्पण करते हैं मनमोहन की मनमोहिनी दीदी स्नेह के सुमन अर्पण करते हैं आपकी शिक्षाएं और पालना बार बार स्मरण करते हैं धुन लगाई थी 
आपकी तरह बने हम दीदी जी आज हम ये दृढ़ संकल्प करते हैं आपकी शिक्षाएं और पालना बार बार स्मरण करते हैं याद फिर आई है आज दीदी जी स्नेह के सुमन अर्पण करते हैं मनमोहन की मनमोही नी दीदी स्नेह के सुमन अर्पण करते हैं ओम शांति थैंक यू टू ऑल बाबस चिल्ड्रन एशिया फैमिली ज्वाइनिंग अस टुडे थैंक यू